I'm standing in the middle of a field in Muncie, Indiana, on the campus of Bald State University, where later today, 300 happy little humans will gather under a ginormous tent to paint a landscape. Many have traveled hundreds, nay, thousands of miles to be here today. Some via happy little road trips, others flying on happy little jet planes. Fathers and daughters, married couples, friends and neighbors, old folks, young folks, all sorts of folks, here for all sorts of different reasons. But the biggest reasons revolve around one man. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because today I thought we'd do a fantastic little painting that I think you'll enjoy. Robert Norman Ross was born on this day in 1942. You probably know him better as Bob. Let's just have a good time. And as I stand in the middle of this field, I'm surrounded by certified Ross instructors from around the country. They're setting up shop, preparing to do what they do, to do what Bob do, guiding, encouraging, offering support, helping us fix our happy accidents. Maybe it rained last night. But today, the weather is picture perfect. It's as if Bob picked up his heavenly paintbrush and created this gorgeous day just for this, just for us. It's a fantastic day here. The Bob Ross Company wisely begged us to document the event, to visit this holy land. The studio where Bob filmed The Joy of Painting is here in Muncie. So is the happy little house in Minnetrusta, where it just about all began, on public television's WIPB. You're watching WIPB, Channel 49, Muncie. Now that house is a museum, the Bob Ross Experience. Bob lived in Muncie. He built his empire just a couple miles down the road. That empire, that legacy, grew and grew just steps away from where I'm standing, right here on the campus of Bald State University. What's that? Ball State University? You sure it's not Bald State? I mean, I figured that's why they asked me to come, no? All right, whatever. Here on the campus of Ball State University, easels are being erected, paint is being unpacked, pallets are being passed out, brushes are about to be brandished. Cameras, monitors, and mics are being tested, and if we're lucky, we won't get arrested. It's Bob Ross's birthday in Muncie, Indiana. We are live at Happy Little Fest, and if you listen closely, you can hear the sounds of joy. Ooh, look, a squirrel. Getting excited, Jim? It's the joy of Bob. It's the joy of Bob Ross Podcast. Happy little stories about Bob. Wow, let's really have some fun. Come on, let's talk Bob. Let's get crazy. On the joy of Bob Ross Podcast. Finding out why Bob's so great, it's my job. Let's have a happy little tree right in here. He was a happy painter, his art inspired us all. We're gonna climb atop majestic mountains and swim under wonderful waterfalls. The joy, the joy, the joy, the joy. There's plenty of reasons to love Muncie, Indiana. It's small town America. It's homey, charming. It's a city that was built on the shoulders of five brothers. The Ball brothers of Buffalo, New York moved here in 1880 and opened a glass factory. They created a manufacturing empire. Those ball jars you drink your lemonade out of? Made right here in Muncie. There'd be no Ball State University without the Ball brothers. Simply put, these balls built this town well before Bob Ross was a bouncing baby boy. Fast forward a century and Bob shows up. Now comes the fun. The Joy of Painting was filmed in Muncie from season two all the way until the end of its run. A good portion of it at Ball State. And the night before Happy Little Fest, we're invited on campus for a VIP event with Bob Ross Royalty. You're going to hear from a lot of those folks in future episodes. But on this night, we're here as observers, reporters, 20 of Bob's original paintings are on display. 
and were set up in WIPB's studio space, in the actual room where Bob filmed his show during the latter half of its run. Pretty cool. And you can just about smell the joy in here. Where's that cheese? Man, I'm hungry. But we all know podcast hosts don't eat on duty. So I swig down some water and get to doing what I do best. Talking to folks. I'm Brian Sutton. I'm a certified Ross instructor, so I teach landscapes and seascapes in Laconia, Indiana, which is uh, an hour southwest of Louisville, Kentucky, right on the river, down in kind of the boot area of Indiana. And what brings you here this evening? Well, you know, obviously I'm a huge Bob Ross fan, and I'm here working the event. Bob's uh, done more for me in my art career than probably any other influencer. So I'm up here spending the weekend helping uh, teach class tomorrow. Tell me your Bob Ross origin story. How did Bob Ross come into your life? Well, it's a sad story, but it's, it has a happy like ending, right? It has a happy oh, ending. if it has a happy ending, happy little ending. I, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. I was a whistleblower in a federal government. I whistle blew on my bosses, and they forced me out, right? So I lost my job, didn't get fired, but I had to quit, right? So you think that's all awful, right? So here I am, sit this crying. This is a real my, story? This is a real story, man. So here I am. You were a whistleblower? Cry- yeah. Wait, we can't yeah. just like, you just like, oh, yeah, no, you no, just no, like no. roll through it. Oh, right? it's not a big deal. I mean, there's lots of things, lots of little things that happen. <laughs> this is that not are, related that are to not, the Bob Ross not story? Not Bob Ross. All right. So but there are lots of little things happen that you have to point out. And all right. So sometimes people get right, mad so, when you point them out. Let me let me just let me just breathe this in a little slower. So you're a whistleblower at a company that you work for. That we're not going to name federal government. Oh, federal government. Okay, yeah. so this is okay. This is yeah. uh, maybe we shouldn't be talking about That's this. Okay. All right. So how does that lead to to Bob Ross? Well, great. Well, it, it happened to be around Christmas time, and and there I am crying in my beer, right? And uh, turn on Netflix. I didn't know who Bob Ross was. I'm not kidding. Let me extend a personal invitation for you to drag out your little paint brushes and some paints and and paint along with us each show. I'm 52 years old and I had no idea who Bob Ross was. So 2017, I discovered Bob Ross on Netflix. So uh, I start watching the episodes and uh, the first night I said, hey, I think that's what I want to do. This is how I'm going to get back on my feet. It'll be good therapy. This will be great. We just show you how, but you make the decisions. When you have this much power, you have to make big decisions. I started painting, and my, a couple of months later, my wife said, you're going to the school down in Florida, and you're going to get certified, and we're going to, we're going to make this thing happen. Within a year, I was teaching Bob Ross paintings all around the country, having a great time, man. So, And the horrible thing that happened to me, something so much better and bigger happened. Do you ever think you could take a big old brush like that and make a little tree? You can. What was it about watching for the first time at your age that was like, man... I got to watch this again, especially now people have short attention spans and yet you went in the complete opposite direction. You, right. you know, you took it to another level. So I, what yeah, was I dug it? in. What I'll was tell it? you what it is. It's very simple. Bob made art accessible to me, right? Now I had always done some types of art throughout my life, various things, photography, you know, things like that. So I was always had an artistic bent, but I never thought that I could do what Bob was doing. And uh, he made that accessible to me. And I think that's the biggest impact that he's had you know, for the world over is that he showed people that they can paint. And the more that you paint and the more that you practice, the more that you're able to visualize these. You really can learn to be creative as you paint. And it's like anything else. It takes a little practice. Yeah, they may not paint like Bob. It's going to take a while to paint like Bob. But the fact is you can paint something you can walk away with that day and go, hmm, I actually did that and it's okay. And then over time you get better and better and better and better. And then you start making money at it. And then you realize that you can get on your feet and this is a great occupation to have and spread joy with other people, man. But yeah. it's really that one thing he made art accessible to everybody. And if you're interested in that, in that happy buck, these will certainly sell. People like these paintings. Bob's art isn't traditional art, so you got to learn new techniques. And you yeah. think people who've been painting for years would come in and just knock this out. But it's actually sometimes a struggle for them because it's a new way of doing things. So that was kind of cool for me too, is I learned, had to learn something completely new and fresh. And it just really kind of inspires your art. It's kind of fun then when you're teaching, because now you're trying to, to, to get other people excited and learn something they can do uh, and have a great time doing it. What do you think you're going to see tomorrow? Is this a new experience for you? You've obviously taught in the wild, but this is kind yeah, of Yeah, the largest class I ever did myself in a Bob Ross class was 30 people. So to have 301, I think they're trying, they're going to break a record here with a Bob Ross company. So 301 is what oh, they're, they're going bringing for in tomorrow. the extra one to so, get yeah, them over the top? Yeah, they got to get one more extra, yeah, to get over the top. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because Nick Hankins uh, did a class of 300 once, so they're trying oh, to beat right. it by one, right? And it's all so, about the numbers with, right, with the BRI the, people, right? <laughs> yeah, so, um, <laughs> so anyway, I, th- I think we're going to see a lot of people come here and have a lot of fun. And let's make some nice little clouds that just float around and, and have fun all day. 
you know, I always tell people that if you come to a, one of my classes, you better bring a good attitude, right? Because that's, the, that's my only rule in class is come with a good attitude. And if something goes wrong, don't worry about it. We're going to fix it. And, and even still, you learn something, right? So if you come to class with a good, good attitude, everybody's going to have a blast. So no fuddy-duddyism, right, is the rule in my classes. None of that stuff, man. you got to come and have a good time. So I think we're going to see a bunch of really happy, fun people come and have a good time. Let's put a few little highlights in here just to make them little rascals just sparkle in the sun. I like to latch on to people in class. Like, they'll, they'll latch on to me, too. I'll sit down and I'll help them. Because some people are going to struggle. But that's where an instructor like me comes in and shows them how to do it up close. Lots of fun. Just let your imagination go. You can create all kinds of beautiful effects. Just that easy. One of the things that has brought me joy is, is just pure joy, is the fact that I really get along with my wife a lot. I just, I just adore her, right? I mean, she's just a fantastic human being. And so I spend 24-7 essentially with my wife because we are working together we teach classes together we're and if i'm not teaching and she is i'm be i'm her gaffer man i'm hauling all her gear for her i'm getting things it takes set a up. specific type of chemistry yeah, yeah we have a great relationship and so i think that and that's another thing that bob ross really gave me is he gave me that ability even though i never met bob in my life he gave me that ability to spend so much quality time with my wife my mother-in-law is a certified floral instructor right <laughs> so did this happen before you became a cri or after after they went the year after me because they saw so they, what, saw, they yeah, saw that so yeah. so that's exactly it's the base right there is they saw what it had done to you and they're like i want to be part of this too right yeah i'll tell you and here's something else i talk a lot of things and i have a certain way that i teach my classes and i hope that i'm unique i don't know if i'm unique but i hope that I'm unique and we have a lot of fun. I have these repeat customers who come back. I have 6,000 customers that I've I painted with over the last five years, Bob Ross paintings. Wow. 6,000. 6, I have a small core group of people who come back all the time and some of them were coming back weekly. I have actually put five of my customers through the Bob Ross school. And that may be the true joy of painting is when you share it with other people. They were so inspired that they went and they all got certified. So now I have five of my customers who are now certified Ross instructors also. Right. I just it's think like that's gremlins, fantastic. Right. right? It's yeah. like when the gremlins go in the swimming pool and they yeah, all they multiply. Yeah, they multiply. Yeah. Right? So it's yeah, so it's not only so it's me, my wife, my mother-in-law, and then five of my customers. I just think that's so fun and it just brings me so much joy to, to think that oh yeah, they're out doing their thing now because some of them are out teaching, doing their own stuff now. And right. I'm fine with that. I mean, they're competitors now technically, but you know, whatever. There, there's right. there's it's a friendly <laughs> competition. Cares, right. Yeah, like, Have fun. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I really believe that's the true joy. A through line and it's also kind of related to my story. I'd gone through a hard time leading up to getting this gig. And part of the reason that I was excited to do something mm -hmm. was because I thought, you know, this dude, that was what he was all about. Right. And I need some joy in my life. Yeah. So I've tried to model the podcast in the spirit of the joy of painting mm -hmm. where like, let's have some fun. Let's be spiritual. Let's talk about paint and we'll do all that stuff. But right. let, like, he liked to have some fun. He liked to keep things light. He had animals on his show. Right. It was more than just a guy who was painting a tree or painting a landscape or whatever. And it's nice to do scenes that reflect the way you feel. A lot of these experiences are born out of hardship, some sort of thing, a bad relationship, a situation in, in a real world job. Right. It seems like these people turn the page, including yourself, yeah. and by turning the page and leading down this happy little path, their lives are changed for the better. For the better, for the better. I mean, you would, you would think that losing a very high paying job, you would think that that would have just ruined me, right? I mean, you would have thought that, but you know, it didn't, and that's because Bob was there. You can do it. I know you can. Get up off your chair and go grab your paint, right? And I swear to you that that is exactly what changed my life. And then I realized, hey, I can make a little money doing this. You put a happy buck in your pocket. And how do I make this a reality and how do I have a blast? And I have a blast every single day. My wife and I work this job full time. Not always Bob Ross. I and mean, we do traditional art as well, but traditional oil painting, traditional acrylic painting, we do that. Um, but, but nobody else this, was talking to you like Bob was. That's the thing that, made, like, that's what we just heard in, that, in the other yeah, room during yeah. these speeches is like, not just saying you can do it, but the way he tells you, right. you know, he's like super chill. <laughs> yeah. He's super light about it. Let's get crazy. What the heck? Bob always had the funniest way to say things. And for example, water's flat. It lies around on its back all day like me. Okay. When he says something like that, on the surface, you're like, ha ha. Corny joke, Bob, ha ha, get over. But, but he says it over and over and over in episode after episode after episode. And so what's he doing? 
he's teaching you to remember to make your water level. I mean, it's just very interesting ways that he would actually in, embed those little thoughts it's with like you. It's like acronyms. Right. And it, yeah, it's like yeah. A, it's almost like a mnemonic, right? It's almost like a mnemonic. And so then you re- you remember several things that Bob would say throughout, throughout the thing. And so I repeat them in class. I repeat Bob's sayings because you realize just how genius they were, even though they're like, they seem silly, but they were actually very genius in the way that he got people to remember things and to do them that stuck with them long-term. I mean, I remember so many Bob Ross sayings just from, from, from watching pretty much all the episodes. I remember them. I think everybody needs a friend. Everybody needs a friend. And I employ them. Well, that was my last question is, you're of that age. Where were you when Bob Ross was I was, was playing on? baseball and chasing women, right? I was also a musician, <laughs> and I had hair Sounds back like then, me. right? I had hair man, back then. Man, I'm talking to myself I, mean, right I, now. I started playing. I started playing guitar, man, for the women, right? I didn't have time for Bob Ross. I didn't know the women would appreciate my painting <laughs> abilities, right? So I was playing baseball and playing, and, and, and playing the guitar, man, to get some women. Um, and I wish, I wish at the time that I had known, I wish I had been a PBS watcher at the time because I probably... I might have said, hey, man, wow, all right, let's go do some paint. The next morning on Bob's birthday, we're up at the crack of dawn. Happy birthday, Bob. Looks to me like it's early in the morning. It's coffee for breakfast, then more interviews. Then yours truly takes part in a PBS panel about Bob Ross. I have officially earned my nerd badge. We connect with most of the certified rock star instructors. Faye Fletcher, who we talked to in our first episode, gives me a hug. And she gives me a mug. A little thank you from Faye and her husband Jimmy for featuring her on the podcast. And this ain't no Bob Ross mug. Instead, it's adorned with pictures of Faye and Jimmy's pet goats. Classy. Now it's time to meet the fans. Rock stars in their own right, but like us, here not to teach, but to learn. Sitting side by side, lined up on long tables, row after row, brushes in hand, their eyes focused on CRI Doug Hallgren, who from a small stage at the front of a tent, is being his best Bob. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in a happy little tree over here on the left. Doug's looking dapper in a button-down shirt and a sweater vest. He's got one of them fancy headset mics, so he obviously knows what he's doing. To that, I want you to add half of your band dyed brown, half of your sap green, mix it all together, and that'll give you a nice dark green. And then we're gonna take the next. Doug Hallgren's the band leader today. Meanwhile, a couple dozen other CRIs like our new friend Brian Sutton Nick and Ada Hankins, Doug's partner Eddie Cuervo, and our old friends Faye Fletcher and Ted Simpson float around different sections to help everyone with their painting. And of course, Bob is here. On TV monitors placed around the tent. But in spirit, too. Because everyone under this tent has been touched by Bob. Not just the painting professionals. Our friend James Shapiro from Jansen Media, who's handling a live stream of the event having the chance to stream him onto Twitch and coming out to these events and doing all these things in in his honor and his legacy, that's what, I guess that's what's made it grow on me. We've done a lot of work with Nick Hankins. Just watching him do it and seeing somebody being able to make the painting a masterpiece within like an hour is like ridiculous. And I think that's, it's the mastery for me of the, the technique that's like most interesting. A couple celebrating their wedding anniversary. The dude is dressed like Bob, the wig, the shirt, a stuffed peapod doll in said shirt pocket. He's all in. The girl is dressed like a cat. The squirrel's mortal enemy. Watch your back, peapod. I'm back as promised, cat lady. <laughs> okay. What's your name, my dear? Anna. Anna. Where are you from? I'm from Marion, Indiana. You're here with Brian slash Bob? Yeah. And is this your first painting rodeo as well? Uh, as far as Bob Ross goes, yes. I'm, an, I'm a full-time artist, but I've never um, had the experience of the whole Bob Ross experience until now. I've watched my whole life, but it's fun to actually apply it. 
And your husband Brian over here is scraping away as, as we talk. <laughs> yes, he is. And um, is this something that you, you've done together before as a couple? He watches me paint all the time, but I don't think we've actually sat and done a painting class together ever until now. And what brings you here? Bob Ross. And it's our anniversary. Our Monday is our six year wedding anniversary, so. Oh, it's congratulations. A gift to each other. Yes, thank you. It's a gift to each other. What are you painting? It's a snowy mountain scene. Yeah, three peaks and a snowy top. And then some happy trees and with a reflection in the water. And everybody's painting the same thing. And I have to say, you know, I'm just looking around. Mm -hmm. You guys are, uh, you know, you're up there in the we know what we're doing category. I don't want to, oh. I don't, I don't want to give you too much confidence. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not a painter myself, but. <laughs> it looks good. So, okay. Well, I, I'm, yeah, I'm the whole time artist. But I, again, I've never done the Bob Ross technique. So this is all new to me. And I don't do landscapes normally, and I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. Well, enjoy yourselves. Thank You're doing you. a great job, and happy anniversary. Thank I appreciate you. the time. Thank you. Happy birthday to Bob. Right on. Happy birthday, Bob. Thank you. A friend who encouraged his younger friend to pick up a brush. Um, is this your first time painting along with Bob Ross? Yes, it is for me. Yep, Charlotte's first time. I've done one or two of them before as well. And what is it like to do it surrounded by everybody else doing it at the same time? Does it add pressure to the experience? I don't think it adds pressure. It's more of like it makes it more of a group experience, I think. Yeah, it was pretty cool when you heard all the brushes being used at once. Yeah. It was like this chorus of brushes hitting the That foot thunk sound going over and over. Yeah. yeah, and you know, knowing that when we walk around, they're all going to look different. It's pretty cool, too. Yeah. Charlotte, what's your relationship to Bob Ross? I just think that the way he paints is like is is I think it's such like a therapeutic way of painting because instead instead of being like okay we do this and he's just like he says everything is like a happy little something and he makes everything so upbeat and happy it's it's just it's very different I really like it. Did you do any painting before you discovered Bob Ross? A little bit like I did stuff for school but nothing like really on my own so. Well, we might count on you to be the next Bob Ross. We need somebody to carry on the tradition. We need young people. That was We were discussing that today about how the youth of America yeah. needs to jump on board with this. And it's refreshing to see Charlotte here doing this. What about Absolutely. you, Andy? What's your story? I think I really only discovered him in reruns on television. Mm. You know, and I was sitting watching TV one day and caught like four or five episodes in a row. And it was pretty cool, just like within a period of a half an hour to see it come to life, you know? And there is some of the stuff that I'm like, oh, I could do that. And there are other things that I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could tackle that. But it's kind of neat to try. Well, it's one thing to uh, play along at home, but it sounds like you've done this a few times already. Is this? Um, yeah. How does this enhance the experience for you? Oh, it's awesome being outside. Like, That's true. We are under yeah, a, a monstrous tent, tent right, right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just neat being like on grass while painting grass. You know. It's pretty amazing watching the joy of painting be spread under this tent. Real folks painting in real time. And in your world, you decide where you want your little path to be. And oh yeah, I didn't come here alone. For I am no octopus. I am only one man. A simple man. Two arms, two legs, two ears, one voice. There's no way I could talk to everyone here at Happy Little Fest. So I nudge one of my production partners out into the crowd. His name is Andrew, Andrew Puglisi, and he helps me make this podcast. If there's anything you don't like about this podcast, it's probably Andrew's fault. But anyway, go forth, brave Andrew, I say, and get me some happy little tape that would make Bob Ross proud. All kidding aside, I couldn't do this podcast without Andrew. And not only does he come through handling all the tech, talking to folks I can't access, he also changes. To have people come up when you ask them, hey, can I talk to you about Bob Ross? And their eyes just light up. It's so incredible to hear their stories about maybe they didn't think they could paint. And they learned just from watching one episode that that was something that they just had to do. It gave them that passion that they didn't even know they had. Or the people who just love how kind he is and how humble he is and how that's more of what we need today. To see it in real time was such an experience that I wasn't expecting to have, but I'm so grateful to have had. And to have all these people come from around the world to celebrate him. I heard a conversation going on. Don't know if I should have heard it, but <laughs> they were talking about how the Bob Ross show was broadcast in Japan and how big of an impact it had in like Tokyo. 
And just to know that he's gone international with his shows, you could dress up with the Bob Ross wig and the blue shirt and the jeans and walk down the street and people in Japan would know you. I mean, that's kind of cool. Well, why can't you talk about it? That like that's... People should know about that, no? Well, I think I should, but you know, I this is the Ross Goss right here. This is your new feature, Ross Goss with Andrew. What I'm do you in. think? <laughs> I'll bring you all the scoop. We need a stage here, Ross Goss. You were interviewing a couple of people in the ASMR room that they had. Very relaxing, yes. Which also happened to be the studio where Bob filmed the Joy of Painting. You didn't know that and somebody told you, all of a sudden it was almost like you were going to like a religious spot. <laughs> the minute you would say, This is where Bob Ross like used to broadcast it was the asmr room we had to whisper <laughs> i was gonna say why you whispered people would all of a sudden be like oh my god this is it this particular event was not about memorabilia as much as it was about you know embodying the spirit of what bob was all about and i was on a panel with some pretty important people related to bob and, and bob's legacy and that's all they talked about was about how bob changed their lives or with the podcast interviews that we did with some of the CRIs and everybody's got a unique story, but it all kind of revolves around the same thing about how there's some sort of transformation that's gone on in all these people's lives related to their relationship with Bob Ross, whether as, as a kid growing up or somebody who just decided to pick up a paintbrush at some point. Yeah. I mean, my big takeaway from this is that Bob Ross has an ability through the show and just who he was as a person of building community. He just had a way of uniting people and almost making you just feel calm and at ease whenever you watched him and you share that experience with people who like him as well. You know, you walk away now saying to yourself, like, we all kind of are in this Bob Ross thing together now. Well, we want to also acknowledge the tech folks and the media people at WIPB and at Ball State. Uh, shout out to Margaret. Dave, a bunch of people who were just so kind enough to help us set up. We saw people from all walks of life. We saw a married couple who was there doing it together. We saw, you know, a father and daughter. We saw a 93-year-old woman. We saw little kids. The one thing that I've been trying to avoid personally is I don't want to pick up a brush yet. But you, at the end of the event, you couldn't help yourself. I understand that. You're like totally understandable. The full painting event was over and, and they put a drone up in the air and then everybody held their paintings up to show that, hey, 300 something people all painted this you know, majestic mountain painting that the CRIs assisted them with. But while this is all happening, you are picking up a brush, picking up the leftovers from somebody's kit that was there. I was a Bob Ross goblin. <laughs> I was going in and I saw the paint and I saw the brushes and I said, yep, now's my time to shine. And Eddie Cuervo, one of the CRIs, you know, who was nice enough to talk to us during this event, was in your general vicinity. As you would expect, he sees you doing this and he comes over and offers you some tips. Yeah. I wanted to learn how to paint the trees. And so... Eddie taught me how to make the trees. Let's do one together. So you're just going to use the corner of the brush. That's it. You're just going to touch, come down to the center and just barely touch. Don't come back to the center. Tap, tap, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Come back to the center, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Come back to the center. Tap, stay there for a little bit. Stay there for a little bit. Stay there for a little bit. See? Wow. There's your tree. There I you made go. a nice blue right, tree. Let's do it. All right. So they were blue trees. <laughs> this is your world, Andrew. You can do what you want to do on this canvas. And you chose blue trees in this particular case. I feel like I've heard that quote somewhere before. And that's really all that matters. If you're happy with it, and it's what you wanted, that's the only rule. So clearly I am a painting extraordinaire now. I would actually love to take one of these CRI classes. I want to learn from a CRI just to see how many people... It was their first time ever painting in the Bob Ross style, and they all started off the same. I saw the blank canvases before they started, and to see them all go home with these incredible paintings, I want that. I want to go home with a painting and have people be like, who did that? And be like, it was me. Did you experience anything, any, like anything internally? Oh, I felt something transformational for sure. I want to make those trees, and again, there's a technique to making the trees. You heard Eddie say, you have to go with the corner. I have very clumsy hands. So every time I would start it, it would be, oop, not there. Oop, not there. <laughs> so I got to work on that a little bit, a couple more classes. But uh, thank you so much, Eddie, for helping me make those blue trees. A couple more classes. You, you painted for 30 seconds. <laughs> you know what? 
I feel like I can master this. That's all I'm saying. All right, this is potentially a good social experiment to see if you know what you're talking about. A lot of people go in humble. A lot of people probably go in cocky. You seem to be going in on the cockier side. Listen, I believe in myself. That's all I'm going to say. That's what Bob would, uh, you know, Bob would encourage you. I don't, and and why, and who am I to stand in the way of uh, of that encouragement? It's super motivating. I mean, it's the same way that you would watch people run a marathon and you say to yourself, "I could never do that." But you can. You'll learn to create as you paint. There we go. It's the same thing watching these 300 people in a tent of all ages, all sitting in that tent, all starting off with the same blank canvas and all coming out with these incredible, magnificent paintings afterwards. Like that was motivating. That inspired me to want to at least try. Like, why not? Well, let's highlight some of those stories. Anyone in particular that you want to talk about, talk about the people who made you cry. That Those are the stories I want to hear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the reception, there was a woman who just actually overcame brain cancer and when she saw the palette and was in that same studio, she just broke down. I never have a read the heart to use the eyes like a Bob Ross to see the nature. Mm -hmm. And if you really keep quiet and see the nature, you can really find out the beautiful. And he said, we don't make mistake, we just make a happy accident. So to come to the studio, standing here and to see that was Bob here is giving me much more energy to keep going on my way. I spoke to a Bob Ross impersonator and we had a really fun conversation. He told me kind of what got his start. At Minatrista, when they opened up the Bob Ross experience, the girl next to me turned around and asked if she could interview me. She's from the New York Times and I didn't believe her. <laughs> I thought, no, she's probably just an intern or something like that. No, she lives in Indianapolis, works for the New York Times, and she was up there for that event because she's a huge Bob Ross fan. So she interviewed uh, me and my wife and then ran the story. It ran the day before the election, and there is a uh, kind of like a uh, excerpt on the front page. There's a whole big article with our picture and everything, and like after that, there's a bunch of people that contacted us from all around the world to try and do like interviews and stuff. It was like absolutely perfect timing the way it worked out. So there you have it, Halloween weekend, 2022, Bob Ross's 80th birthday celebration at Happy Little Fest, Ball State University. You seem energized, transformed, you're ready to pick up the brush. What do we do next? Like, how do we continue that journey? Put me on a plane and take me to New Smyrna Beach ASAP. I want to do one of these CRI classes. I think 2023, is that the year I'm going to become a CRI certified instructor? Who knows? Well, stay tuned, podcast fam. You just say fam. <laughs> Isn't that what the kids say these days, fam? I don't know who these kids are, but um, is there a Bob Ross fan club name? Do they call themselves something? Um, if not, I'm thinking hashtag Rossinators. Uh, hashtag Ross Bosses. Ooh, the Ross Bosses. I love that. All right, so New Smyrna Beach, 2023, Andrew Puglis becomes a certified Ross instructor, 2042... The Bob Ross 100th birthday extravaganza. Yes. Two million people in a field painting along with CRIs and Bob Ross. And I will be one of those CRIs. Mark my words. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Get crazy. Well, the old clock tower on campus tells me that this happy little festival is done. I want to thank my guests, Brian Sutton, and all the fine folks who talk to us here in Muncie. Special thanks to Ball State University's on-site team for helping untangle our wires and making us feel at home. And of course, a big shout out to the birthday boy. Blow out them candles, Bob. We're gonna call that one finished. Remember to support your local public television station. Say thanks for giving us Bob Ross and the joy of painting. We want to see your paintings. Use hashtag paint like Bob Ross. Bob Ross certified instructors are the only ones that know how to teach you Bob's world-famous painting method. Don't settle for second best. Find the local CRI at bobross.com and then click Take a Class. And if you got your own Bob Ross story to tell, we want to hear about it, pick up your phone and leave us a message at 866-FANBRUSH. Or you can email us at podcast at bobross.com. Follow all things Bob Ross on Twitter at Bob Ross Official. The Joy of Bob Ross is produced by Lonely Weekend Productions in partnership with Bob Ross Inc. 
Bob Ross name and images are registered trademarks of Bob Ross, Inc.